Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, David Bujo. I'm a <coughs> project manager, manager and software developer at the uh, Canadian Centre for Computational Genomics uh, here at McGill. <coughs> and uh, today I'll, I'll just give you a, a small lecture on uh, how to launch a job on an HPC and more, more specifically uh, at <coughs> Compute Canada HPCs. Uh, so a, a lot of the things I will present are quite specific to Compute Canada, but uh, can also be applied uh, more generally to uh, other resources such as Amazon Web Services and so on. Uh, so uh, yeah, there you go. So first of all, what is a what is an HPC? HPC stands for High Performance Computer, and uh, so basically, it's if if you think about like traditional uh, in-house servers that like uh, labs have been uh, having uh, for 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 many years for their computational needs. Uh, like, well, with the uh, always increasing amount of data that's being generated by, by uh, high throughput sequencing and those things, uh, these resources can get uh, quickly overwhelmed. So, for example, like uh, uh, here at, at, the, at the Genome Center uh, at McGill, we purchased our own compute cluster in uh, 2012, I believe, and uh, like it, with just the the uh, ever increasing amount of, uh, of of sequencing data that kept coming, it quickly became uh, overwhelmed, and uh, we needed to turn to, to, to other solutions. Um, in Canada, we have uh, the uh, Compute Canada that can that comes to the rescue. Basically, these are uh, like free compute resources offered to uh, Canadian academia and research, research uh, field. So. Again, like um, in this case, I'm talking about C Compute Canada, but there's also uh, many other options uh, which which are available commercially. So, a um, a cluster or a, a, an HPC such such as a Compute Canada, uh, it's basically a a cluster of computers, uh, like uh, it's many hi uh, highly performant computers put together to uh, to execute to execute the uh, jobs. Uh, a lot of jobs at the same time. So each individual uh, computer in the cluster is called a node. And uh, what is Compute Canada? Well, it's a uh, it's a national platform of uh, like many centers with a lot of these uh, of these uh, high performing uh, computers at the at the same place, and the pe people in research can connect to them and launch compute jobs. To that, that will execute like uh, with a like, very uh, high needs in the storage space, uh, very high needs in, uh, in in RAM for execution and those things. And so, yeah, th th there's many centers across Canada. Although, like right now, there's Compute Canada is in kind of a restructuration. So, like we're starting to have a, uh, to see less sites, but with many, many more machines. Uh, but at the moment, there's a six uh, like. Uh, Provincial or local, I may say, uh, consor uh, consortia within Compute Canada, which are uh, ACENET, Calque Quebec, SciNet, uh, HPCVL, SharkNet, and uh, WestGrid. So, con concepts connected to Compute Canada. Well, first of all, uh, these are again shared resources for Canadian academia. It, uh, when you subscribe to it, you, it gives you an, ac uh, an access with the. Uh, uh, free compute resources, free storage space, and, and these kind of things. You get a yearly al allocation. So, like when you apply, you get a you get an account with, uh, for, depending on the place where you apply, uh, you get a couple of terabytes of storage space, and you get uh, a compute compute time to execute uh, the to execute jobs. When I, when I talk about jobs, by the way, I, I talk about launching a software that will do a specific task that that, that you ask it to do. So, like. Uh, all of the bioinformatics tools that we cover in this workshop can be launched as jobs on these HPCs. So when you apply, you get a, a yearly, yearly allocation with compute time, with storage space, and uh, yeah, that's it. So when you uh, launch a job or when you launch a software on these HPCs, it will um, it will count toward the yearly allocation that you get. So 
uh, these uh, these slides are available uh, on, online as well but uh, so uh, if you're interested uh, you you can uh, follow the URL provide, provided here uh, the way to, to, to apply if, uh, is to go to the Compute Canada website uh, you uh, you click to apply for an account then you give your your information a couple uh, a couple of days later you should have access to to the Compute Canada portal and then you can uh, apply to a uh, local regional uh, consortium and from the list that I've uh, given you before and then after that you will have access to one of these uh, regional sites uh, uh, HPCs so concept connected to Com uh, Compute Canada accounts uh, when you log in for the first time well when you log in any time on, on, on an HPC you are on a login node so these are the nodes from where you, you get from the outside you get in the HPC and that's the place from where you will launch compute jobs. So login nodes are the HPC entry point. And uh, when you launch job, when you launch software execution, they are put on a scheduler. So these, um, these uh, resources, these compute resources are shared among a lot of people. So the way to make sure that like, not everybody launches software at the same time and makes things crash in the end is because uh, like servers are out of memory, is you have this, this concept of waiting queue called a scheduler. So when you launch a job, it goes in a, wait, in a waiting queue, and then you wait for your turn. And depending on how much resources you, uh, you asked for to execute your job, it will take more or less time. And when your turn comes, your, so your software will start executing, and you will, uh, you will be notified by, uh, for example, by email if you choose so, uh, once your job is, uh, is, is completed. So yeah, the schedule is a queue in which computation jobs are waiting for available compute nodes. Um, and yeah, resources are limited, so jobs should always get launched on the schedulers. So, like uh, the Compute Canada HPC system administrators don't like when uh, people launch jobs on login nodes, because uh, even though they have a high amount of resources as well, it just makes the system slow for everyone. So when you launch a job uh, at Compute Canada, always make sure it goes on the scheduler. Um, and then, yes, so the, again, the, the, the time that you will wait on, in queue for your job to finish depends on many things such as how, how many people have submitted jobs, uh, how long the, the, the job you, you th how long it will, you think it will take for the job to execute. So like you, you can put a limit, like if you know like uh, you, you will, you do an alignment, uh, the, the alignment of a, you, you, a FASTA read set, and you expect it to take uh, two days, you can specify to the scheduler that the job will probably take two days or maybe max three or something like that. So, so like somebody who says his job will probably take seven days might wait a, a little bit more. So like you can get a bit of priority by gauging well the amount of time you think the job will take to execute. Uh, same thing for the amount of, uh, of RAM and CPUs needed. And uh, also depending on the, the the time you will wait depends on the amount, the remaining allocation you still have at Compute Canada. Uh, and yet, yeah, once you launch a job, you can control these parameters by uh, uh, specifying the amount of time you want and uh, these things. Um, so for the workshop today and tomorrow, we will use software that's, um, uh, that's preloaded through CVMFS on the, the, the server that, that you will connect to. So the, this uh, CVMFS is this, uh, this distributed file system which was basic, which came, was originally implemented by, uh, by the CERN uh, uh, super collider experiments uh, for, for a distributed uh, experiment computation. So like many sites are computed, computing uh, uh, parts of the, 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 the part of the job that, that, that needs to be done. And uh, so CVMFS has been created as a, a way to distribute virtual machines across different sites. And like uh, the, uh, the GenApp project adapted this to distribute bioinformatics codes and uh, libraries such as uh, like a G genome, reference genomes and, 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 so, and so on. So uh, a lot of the Compute Canada HPCs and the, the, the workshop server you, you will use today and tomorrow 
have CDNFS uh, available in it, which means like you have the same catalog of software and reference libraries available at all places. Uh, one important concept for, for today and tomorrow is that um, we will make use of modules to, uh, to, to select the software that we want to use. By default, um, not all the, the, the genomic software that's available in CDMFS is readily accessible from the command line. You have to load the modules that you want to use in order to execute your, your software properly. So to get, we'll cover that in the, in the lab that we will start in a couple of minutes, but just to say, uh, to get a list of uh, all available modules with bioinformatics software and those things, you can do the command module avail and that will give you uh, the list of the list of software with all of their versions and that gives you an, adva an advantage is like uh, CVMFS has sometimes multiple versions of the same software uh, loaded to ensure that like if you're used to you to one specific version and you want to run all of your analysis always using the same version of the software which is quite important because sometimes there's differences from one version to the other uh, the version of, of the software which are in CVFS will, will always be there. Even if there's upgrade and we add more versions, you can always load the same module and your entry execution will be the same for all, all, of, your, uh, all of your samples. Um, so to use one of these modules, once you, so you type module avail, you get the list of uh, available software, you, then you can choose which module to, to load uh, with the command module use. Uh, um, no, module load, sorry, so you, you, you type module load to load, to, uh, to load the software and the module used to get the, to load a specific list of software, but mostly the, the last two commands are important for, uh, for this workshop. So you need, uh, you need to load modules, as I said, to launch jobs on the scheduler. And, okay, so one last thing. So for this workshop today, we will not be launching job on a scheduler. We have, uh, we have enough resources for everyone to launch the, the jobs that we, uh, that, that, that we will, the, the, to use all the software that we will use for this workshop um, all at once, okay? But like usually when you launch a job on a scheduler, you will use the QSub command. So there's a lot of parameters for QSub, as I said before. You can specify the number of core, the, uh, the wall time, which means the amount of time you think the software will take to execute. It's important to set these numbers properly because like if you if an assembly is going to take three days to complete and you say oh, I, I think it will complete in 10 hours and it doesn't well after 10 hours it, the job gets uh, gets killed and then you need to start again so yeah that's why like less wall time means a quicker processing but uh, in, the, in the queue but job will get killed at the end yes so if you don't there's a default wall time of 48 hours, I think, in, in most uh, Canada HPCs. So yeah, it's it's yeah it's, it's it's fine for most need. But for example, if you launch FastQC on this, FastQC will usually not take 48 hours to execute. So you'll you'll just wait too much to get your execution done for nothing. So more questions? Okay. So that's it. Then there was just a. Uh, a short introduction to the Compute Canada resources.